We continue our series from 1 Corinthians, and we're up to 1 Corinthians 12. Now, in 12 and 14, especially, they look at what's called gifts of the Spirit. Now, in the Bible, spiritual gifts are always discussed as being active gifts given by the Holy Spirit for the building up of the body of Christ. The gifts must therefore be looked in the context not of just the individual, but we as the body of Christ. And before we look at the gifts, it's good to understand the type of church that Paul was writing to in Corinth. Now, a quick read through 1 Corinthians, you realise that it was not an easy church. I'd hate to be their pastor. Why is that? They had conflict. So there in 1 Corinthians verse 11, 17, it says, I have no praise for you, for your meetings do more harm than good. There are divisions among you. Now, isn't it horrible if someone says, our church services end up making me feel worse than better? Uh, I hate going to church and there's always conflict and fights. So it wasn't a good place. One of the things they struggled with was what you call false wisdom. So back there in 1 Corinthians 3.18, Do not deceive yourselves. For anyone of you who thinks he is wise by the standards of his age, he should become a fool so that he may be wise. So there's obviously a bit of elitism amongst the church and a bit of one-upmanship. And they were worldly. There in chapter 3, verse 1, Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly mere infants in Christ. And then in verse 3, you are still worldly. One of the other struggles they had in the church is they had a false spirituality. They would think they were as good as angels. They thought they had received all the blessings here on earth. And everything that heaven was going to offer, they already had. They were rich now. They were successful now. They were kings now. They were like the angels now. They were wise now. They were strong now. Therefore, they needed no resurrection. In other words, from their point of view, heaven offered them nothing. So there in chapter 4, verse 8. Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. You have become kings. And that is without us. Then 4 verse 10, we are fools for Christ, but you are so wise in Christ. We are weak and you are so strong. You are honoured and we are so dishonoured. So you can see the struggles that Paul had when he wrote to this church. And they were a broken church. They were a sinful church. So what were some of the sins they had to deal with? They had sexual immorality. So there in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1, it's actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that does not even occur among the pagans. And how embarrassing. You say, my church sins far better than what the world can sin. They had legal disputes. There in chapter 6, verse 1. If any of you has a dispute with another, dare he take it before the ungodly, for judgment instead of before the saints. And when they had time of fellowship, next week we have our uh, church lunch. It is a great time. What was their fellowship lunches like? There in chapter 11, uh, verse 21. As for you eat, each of you goes ahead without waiting for anybody else. One remains hungry, another gets drunk. And so it's just a big booze up. And uh, the church was so much in the now, they had lost sight of the resurrection and eternity. Now Paul talks about the resurrected body and the Lord's return. And uh, you see that uh, it's a church that had struggles. And so when it came to the whole issue of spiritual gifts, we can understand they would have struggles with understanding the gifts of the Spirit as well. So if you go through 1 Corinthians, we capture a picture of what Paul saw they needed to be. And the first thing he said was, what was his message? Then in chapter 1, verse 18, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It's amazing how often people in the world will regularly want to belittle you or pick on you or try and humiliate you because you're involved in a church. And yet Christ, and Christ alone brings forgiveness, assurance, the confidence of eternal life with him forever. And so there in chapter 1, verse 31, Therefore, as it is written, let him who boast. Let them boast in the Lord. There in chapter 2, verse 2, For I am resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Then 3, verse 11, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that you already has been laid. And that is Jesus Christ. So Paul says, In your church is the full of mess. 
Step back to where you need to be. Step back to being right with Jesus. Now in terms of ministry, he says here in chapter 3 verse 9, For we are God's fellow worshippers and workers. You are God's field, God's building. Chapter 12 verse 7, Now to each one of you, the manifestation of the Spirit is given. Why? For the common good. Then chapter 12 verse 13, For we have all been baptised by one Spirit into one body. Then 14 verse 12, So it is with you, since you are eager to have spiritual gifts, try to excel in gifts that build up the church. Paul's ministry was not about his ego, it was not about his status, but his deep, intimate passion that they would grow and love Jesus more. Now in terms of behaviour, how do they treat each other? Chapter 10, verse 24, No one should seek his own good, but the good of others. 10.31, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it always to the glory of God. For I'm not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. Paul's desire was the world is broken and we as Christians have the answer. We need to share that powerfully. Then in chapter 9, verse 19, Though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. You can see that the gospel of Jesus had moulded and changed and transformed who Paul was. And Paul's passion was, I want to see that change in me, in you. I want to see Jesus working powerfully in you. So when it came to the whole area of gifts, it's all caught up in chapter 14, verse 19. But in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue unknown. Why is it this? Because his passion was that they would grow in intimacy with Jesus. So let's turn now to spiritual gifts. And the spiritual gifts are really about ministry within the body of Christ. It's all about uh, how we build each other up. So there in uh, chapter 12, verse 4, it says there are different kinds of gifts, but they are the same spirit. Then verse 7, now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. In other words, every single person here has been gifted by God in some way for the building up the body of Christ. That means on those Sundays that you're not here at church, our church is missing something. We're missing your ministry. Then in verse 11, he gave to the people ministries or gifts and to each person as God determines. God chooses what gifts he gives to us. We don't. But the gifts we do have, he wants us to use them for his honour and his glory. Now in terms of gifts, there is no one who's insignificant in the kingdom of God. I imagine if I'm in a room with people like Billy Graham and a whole of other heroes, I'd be standing there thinking, oh my gosh, I don't deserve to be in this room with these people. But God would say, yes you do, because each of you has been given a ministry, a purpose, and a direction. So they're in chapter 12, verse 12. The body is a unit that is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. We need each other. Then verse 13. For we have all been baptised by the one Spirit in one body. There's a sense of unity, and our gifts have to bring that unity about. Then in verse 18. But in fact, God has arranged the parts of the body, each one of them, just as he wanted them to be. God has put you into your family to minister to your family. God has put you into your workplace to minister to your workplace. God has given you friends that you can minister to your friends. God has opened up a number of doors and said, you are my person to use in that situation. Should we be indifferent to gifts? No. The weaker and the stronger Christians need to participate in the body of Christ. So they're in chapter 20, uh, 12, 22. Those parts of the body that seem to be weaker and indispensable, and if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, all parts are honoured with it. And verse 27, now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of that body. There's a sense that we have a corporate identity, that we form a team. A couple of years ago, I thoroughly enjoyed the, uh, the privilege of going sailing. 
And uh, how good am I at sailing? I have one thing I do really well, and it is this. <laughs> and so the guy would say, let the sail out, and I'd let the sail out. He'd say, let the sail in, I'd let the sail in. Did I know anything about the wind? Not really. Did I know about uh, spinnakers and all the different jargon? Not really. I had one thing I had to turn. I don't even know what the proper name for the thing is that I turned. I just called it the whirly thing. And uh, that's all I'd do. And uh, there'd be minutes at a time, I'd just sit there and look at the view and think how fantastic it was. And every time I'd say, uh, you're about to turn, and I'd go ahead and do my spinning. And that's what I did. But I also realised that um, if I was too slow, he'd let me know. If I was too fast, he'd let me know. And uh, I realised that I had one thing to do, but if I stuffed up my one thing, it stuffed up everybody. Because that sail that was temp- dependent on me, and our yacht was dependent on that sail. So here's this 50-foot yacht, and here's me, the lowest job in the, uh, the crew. If I stuff up, everything falls apart. And that's the same with the body of Christ. You might say, but all I do is X. You say, but if you don't do it, what happens? And so what happens in the body? The, the, first thing is we, the third thing we find out is there's instruction. Our ministries, our gifts, our calling needs to be in response to God's word. And that God is the one who creates the order. So there in verse 28. And in the church, God has appointed first apostles, then teachers, uh, then prophets, and thirdly, teachers. There's a sense that God gives direction, God gives order, and God gives purpose. So what are spiritual gifts? Spiritual gifts are special abilities. They are unique. So they're in Matthew 25. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, to another one talent, and he gives to each according to his ability. So in other words, God is a gift giver. And each of our ministries have a uniqueness that is given a flavour by our personality. The second thing about gifts in the, in the church, they're given by the Holy Spirit. We don't choose the gifts, God does. So then in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11, All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. I would have loved the ability and gift to sing, and uh, my singing is great, except there's only two things that are wrong with it. I don't use melody, and I don't use rhythm. Except for that, my singing's great. <laughs> now, I'd love that gift. I don't have it. But others have it fantastically they can use for the body of Christ. So gifts are given by God. And they're given from the moment we're converted. God starts giving us ministries to do. And every single person here, every believer in Christ, has ministries to do. So there in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 7. But each man has his own gift from God. Or 1 Peter 4.10 Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's gift in its various forms. Every Christian has at least one gift or ministry that God has given to them. Our prayer is, God, how do you want to use me? And I think the irony is, if the church has a need, God will give people in the church gifts to equal the need that is needed. Now the gifts are given according to God's grace. So there in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 18, But in fact God has arranged the parts of the body, each one of them, just as he wanted them to be. So what does that say about gifts? When we turn to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 4, verse 11, It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. <coughs> Why? To prepare God's people for works of service. Why do we do works of service? so that the body of Christ may be built up. What gifts has God given you? What ministries does God would love you to be involved in? It says in Romans 12 verse 6, We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. God bestows his gifts for meaningful service. The gifts are given in the context of the body of Christ. As it says in Ephesians 1.22, God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is Jesus' body. Or Colossians 1.18, And Jesus is the head of the body of the church, so that in everything he may have supremacy. Or 1 Peter 4.10, Each one should use whatever gifts he has received to serve others. The spiritual gifts are not for our ego. 
not for our status, not for our glory, not for our fame, but to love, passionately serve one another. Jen and I went to a, a lovely birthday party yesterday for a local minister's wife and um, I started cutting up the cake and I saw that there was only so much table and they had so much spot for cake. So I just walked down the table and started putting all the, the dishes into piles and, 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 and just collecting all the things and just moving all the, the food there to the other end to make room for the cake. I just thought that's a natural thing to do. And uh, one of the ladies came up to us and says, you're a minister in the church, aren't you? I said, yes. I could tell that the moment you picked up those plates. Why? Because as a minister, my main job is to serve. And I thought it was a bit cheeky, and she's a bit joking about how most ministers wouldn't do it, but she knew that I must have been the right type of minister. So we're called to use our ministry to love each other. So what are spiritual gifts not? They're not natural talents. So natural talents are not spiritual gifts. The phys- we get natural talents from our physical birth, Gifts from God come from our spiritual birth. Our talents are to edify ourselves often, where the gifts are to edify others. We may be given gifts uh, like cooking that, uh, and, and things like that. That is a natural talent. But for Christians, there's things like discernment because it helps the body of Christ. Now, both natural talents and spiritual gifts can vary in degree and kind. Both natural talents and gifts can be developed and uh, God has given our gifts and our talents to be used under the Lordship of Jesus. So there in Colossians 3.17, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Or Colossians 3.23, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ that you are serving.